Um, we move now to um, something perhaps not quite in the um, straight, same uplifting league, but um, <laughs> it's a report from Bill McCarthy on the establishment program closed down. I always like to cheer you up, Chairman, with my uh, regular <coughs> reports on the program. This is, you, you recall, during the course of last year, we, at the heart of what we were doing was, was establishing ourselves in the commissioning system, and we identified 13 critical success factors which we tracked ourselves on, we very openly tracked ourselves um, uh, on the progress of those with the attendant risks that we were managing and putting in place uh, contingencies wh where we needed to. We, we, we shall be drawing that together into a, a formal closed down report so that, so that all of the strands of that work um, can be followed through and can be uh, located and, and we'll do, do that publicly. But I thought that rather than wait for that mm. formal report, the, the board would appreciate uh, just a flavour of particularly how this first month in our operations being, which, which is a real test of uh, our success in, in achieving those factors which we set out. So that's what this brief verbal update's um, about. The um, a, a, a lot of what we're focusing on was around our workforce, recruiting, developing our people, and, and Joe is going to cover that in the subsequent report, and also Victor's report of the authorisation subcommittee will uh, what will tell us about CTG establishment. I'll, I'll focus more on ourselves. The um, we had 49 work streams that we were following through. Of those, we've successfully um, closed 25. So 25 of those were just about transition, <coughs> and we got them to, if you like, a green state where we were, we were comfortable, and, uh, and those now were part of building the organisation. 19 of them are part of our ongoing business now. So they were really important things that we needed to do, um, for example, setting up our organisational development work, but they don't come to an end with, with, the, <laughs> with the transition period. They're, they're here with us, and so they're incorporated in the business plan. And there's just um, five which we thought were critical to our establishment but which are, we're still going to be working on over a period of about six months, I've thought of transition. And th those are things like our corporate IT systems, where we took a decision, you remember last autumn, that we needed to put in place a set of contingency arrangements and the full rollout of our new systems would go on until, uh, until this autumn. Um, Joe, I'm sure, will talk about the payroll systems that we'll develop. So some of those nitty-gritty basic <coughs> things that we need to keep improving and developing over the next six months or so, but all of them are in hand and all of them have been captured as part of our uh, business plan transition element. So I think I can give the board assurance that we're uh, in, in, in a decent place. I would refer back to your opening, your opening remarks, Chairman, about just the scale and complexity of the task at hand, which, which has been immense. Um, and I'm, I'm just exceptionally grateful to the teams, a s small band of, I was going to say volunteers, actually <laughs> most of them were volunteers, because mo most of them came on to join us when we were the Commissioning Board Authority and did it without certainty of having a future role with us. They all had to go through the recruitment processes mm -hmm. and the energy, expertise, commitment that those people put in to help us get to this point <coughs> was quite extraordinary. So, so I would like to, like to thank them uh, r r really seriously. I'd also like to thank all of those people who've joined us in the past few weeks because by its nature we've been having to put in a whole series of workarounds just to get us into 
into really small operating condition. And that's meant we've you know relied on quite a lot of cooperation, understanding, tolerance. And if you wanted the first real time hard edge test of to the values mean very much. I think it's in those behaviours that we've experienced over the past few weeks where of course there have been problems that have cropped up but the cooperation between people brand new who could be based in Cornwall or based in, in Northumberland uh, in uh, understanding the challenge, in, in working with us, in getting on to you know, our computer support, our state support, the people support helplines and working through the issues in a really cooperative way with the rights of respect and understanding. Uh, I think it's been great. So, you know, to, to them as well, thanks for the tolerance bearing with us and now for that full engagement and making sure that we're not just uh, kind of learning from experience but, but we're really driving on now to make this uh, a, a very professional, excellent organisation that we're committed to over the coming months. Um, I, I will capture this very fully in a, in, a, in a written report but I thought you'd appreciate just a flavour of, of how we're doing, Chairman. Well, thank you Will, very much for that for your <coughs> final comments. I think everybody on the board remembers that over the past year, at each board meeting, we have received a report on your 39 work streams, uh, red, amber, green, in which the dominant colour was red. And um, that denoted to us a very significant measure of risk uh, about all that we were doing, and cumulative risk that it was all happening all at once. So um, we're very reassured by your report this morning, but also the promise of a full report in due course. <coughs> Ed? Just one quick point, because uh, it sometimes happens. The 19 that were in the transition report and are now being disaggregated into business as usual, um, are we very clear that those to whom it has been handed um, have taken the baton and have picked it up and there are no gaps? Yes, we are. So they, they, they will be incorporated now in the in the directorate work plans to support delivery of the business plan. We'll have a process just to check that the handover has not just been done, but it's been caught as well. And on the, the half dozen, you know, tr tr transition elements, I'm, I'm getting weekly reporting on those just to make sure we're right on top of them. Right. Well, thank you very much Paul, for, for that reassurance. We turn now to the HR report, which is actually something that has um, been involved, I think, in all our discussions this morning. So um, I invite Jo to present her paper. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Chairman. Yes, and thank you for the, the early billing. I, um, from an HR perspective, I think um, this meeting of the board marks a bit of a turning point, and that's been reflected in people's earlier comments, um, a point around which I think we're pretty glad we've now turned. Um, at virtually every meeting for the last year or so, as Bill says, we've discussed a report on HR issues, our recruitment plans, our progress against our recruitment plans, in preparation for our go-live date of the 1st of April. Um, and we're now live. We've now gone live. We're reaching the end of the setup phase as far as the HR project is concerned. And I want to report to the board on three areas today where I think we've seen considerable effort across the organisation every region, every area, team, every directorate working together to achieve some good results, I think. So I want to talk about um, recruitment, the recruitment position, offer letters and payroll. Um, the paper that you have in front of you has got a lot of numbers in it and I'm going to try and pull out the, the key ones. Um, Chairman, I think you had a slight slip of the tongue earlier where you transposed two figures around. Um, the establishment figure is 6,700, not 7,600. So we have 6,700 posts in the establishment and we've filled about 6,000 of those. So that's an 89% uh, fill rate. Uh, we paid um, around about 5,600 people and the balance, the 400 is, is people that haven't started yet so we don't need to pay yet. Um, the source of our recruits, I know this is of interest to the board, people have asked me questions about it before, um, the source of our recruits is interesting so when you look at where people have joined us from about 89% came from um, the existing, the previous NHS system that was being reformed. So SHAs, PCTs, Department of Health, ALBs. 
and about 11% came from other places, so other parts of the NHS that were not being reformed and other sectors. Um, when you look at the fill rate across the organisation, it does vary. You'll see it's almost 100% of posts are filled in London, in the London um, regional uh, structure, and about 75% of posts in the National Support Centre. Recruitment efforts are continuing. There are no areas that are given us particular specific concern. Um, and the only other thing I need to point out about recruitment is there is a, an error in paragraph 14, I think, of the report, which says that um, the South has a fill rate of 84%. That should be 91%. It's correct in the table that's attached. It's just wrong in the narrative. In fact, on the 1st of April, Midlands and East were the region with the lowest fill rate. They had a fill rate of about 88%, so I apologise for that. Um, on offer letters, which we have talked about before, you'll recall at one stage we did have a bit of a backlog around offer letters, and I'm pleased to report that this has now been cleared. Um, so staff do now have their offer letters. Um, for some individuals where their circumstances are a bit more complicated than others, primarily, I have to say, I think civil servants joining us from the Department of Health, we're still handling queries arising from the offer letters. But for the majority of staff, the terms of their appointment are now settled, and we're into very small numbers where we're trying to pick up and resolve queries. Um, the staff who joined us from the existing system, if you recall, I said 89% of the people we've recruited came from the, sorry, the existing system, the previous system. Um, they joined us on what's known as a transfer scheme. It's a statutory instrument that moves the employment of those staff from one body to another. Um, they don't need us to give them an employment contract because we adopt the employment contract that they had at the point of transfer. Um, so f um, for those people, we don't need to do employment contracts. For the other 11% of staff, we do, and we're mostly doing them as we recruit people. Um, but um, that's the, the next big job for the HR team to make sure everyone who needs one has got a contract of employment. Um, and the big area really I want to update the board is around payroll because at the time of writing the paper we hadn't run the first payroll. Um, people have, several people have mentioned the complexity of the task we've been dealing with over the, the last couple of years and I think that comes to a very obvious pinnacle in the in the in the process around paying people and establishing a payroll so um, I think the board is aware of the really complex task involved in the movement of large numbers of staff from 162 or slightly more pay, existing payrolls onto ours um, and in retrospect I think if you'd have chosen a month to do it April would probably not have been the month you'd chosen to do it because um, there were four considerable changes also happening in April that were not within our control. So um, in April, people get new uh, PAYE codes, new personal tax allowances were coming into being. There was a 1% increase in Agenda for Change pay scales, and there was an increase in NHS pension scheme contributions, which were almost 3%, an almost 3% increase for some staff. That's the second year, by the way, of planned increases. There is another year to come, so they will go up again next year. So, really complicated change process. And for those reasons, we, we put a number of mechanisms in place uh, to help us manage this, this project. Um, I think you'll have noticed we visibly stepped up communications to staff in the couple of months running up to the payroll, so we've been writing to staff on a weekly basis. We put a, a helpline in place, and as a contingency, um, we put two further pay runs in after the first and the main pay run on the 26th of April. Um, I'm pleased to report that we've paid, since last Friday, which was the main payroll, we've paid 5,656 people. 95% of them on that first pay run, 2% um, of them on the second one, which was of Tuesday earlier this week, and 3% on the third pay run, which is today. Um, for 1%, 1 um, of the overall staff that were paid were made by faster payments, so same-day payments. Um, so you can see we didn't need to make extensive use of the supplementary pay runs, which was a, a very good thing. Um, the helpline has been busy. Um, it's been run for us, by the way, by the NHS Business Services Authority. It's been running out of Newcastle. 
Um, it's been busy, I think, principally because of all the complexities around pay changes and tax changes and pension changes at the beginning of April. Um, but it has held up reasonably well. Um, and we've had good feedback about the, uh, the responsiveness and the um, helpful attitude of people in Newcastle. So um, everyone's in now. It feels good to have everyone in. Um, I think people have said the spirit has uh, risen a little bit and it feels very positive. Um, from an employee records point of view, for the next couple of months, what we're going to do now is put right where we need to put right uh, small pay issues for individuals and we're going to clean up and organise the, the data that we've, we've got in place. So we're going to conduct an in intensive data refresh across all our employee records and check with every individual employee that we've got the right information about them. Um, that will be a useful exercise for other reasons as well, because if you recall, we had no equality and diversity data on transferring staff, which is 89% of the staff that we've got. So it'll be a good opportunity to, to get the equality and diversity data completely up to date. Um, and at the risk of repeating some of the things that Bill said, I would like to just end, if it's okay, by saying some, some thank yous to people because um, uh, this has been such a significant undertaking. Um, I should start off by saying, as much as I've said all that, I'm very conscious that for a very small number of staff there were some problems with their pay. Um, and I want to say I'm sorry to them. Um, they've, by and large, been very patient and very tolerant. And I hope in the vast majority of cases we've sorted problems out very quickly and often on the same day. Um, and so I, I'm grateful to people for their, their tolerance. Um, on behalf of Paul and I, who are joint SROs on the payroll project, I think we should say really sincere thanks to people who worked on it. I don't think I've ever seen a gr group of people work as hard as the people have who have done this. Um, and I extend that to the NHS Business Services Authority, who have been fantastic, I have to say, and to Logic and McKess and our payroll providers. Um, and finally, just to say thank you to the many staff, actually, who've sent in positive feedback to both the HR and the finance teams. Um, and uh, it's been really appreciated. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. No, I just um, uh, <coughs> wanted to say we've ended up with about 800 more people than we expected to have in the organisation. And I think maybe when, when you've got through this yeah. hump, we can look at where, where have those extra yeah. positions come from and yeah. just confirm that our funding ha enables us to be able to cover them. Thank you. Yeah, we absolutely will. We'll pick it up as part of the tidying data refresh stuff that we're doing. Um, I've just said they're not, they're mostly lift and shift in the lift and shift category rather than the, the core structure has not changed. But we have plans to pick, Paul and I have plans to pick up that. Uh, and the funding comes with them. Yes. Yes. Well, Joe, on behalf of everybody, can we convey thanks? Um, because when you talk about people working the midnight oil, we, we really do know what people have been going through. And um, there's been a huge investment in trying to ensure that we got off on the right foot with the staff who we wanted to appoint and who we value. Uh, we do appreciate the work that's gone into this. And um, I will, if you're happy, write on behalf of the board uh, to convey the, formally the board's appreciation of what's been undertaken. I do recall a year ago somebody said that the NHS reforms were so big you could see them from outer space, <laughs> uh, which I thought was typical understatement. Um, but the, the vignette that we've had this morning just, just, just captures, doesn't it, the sheer complexity affecting people's lives, people's employment, you know, coming to a completely new employer, complete uncertainty as to what they would find when they got here. And I think the work that Joe's team has done and Tim's team has done and Bill uh, has just managed to to manage a transfer that could otherwise <coughs> have been quite quite disastrous. And I think we owe them uh, a, a very deep debt of thanks. So thank you, Joe, for that thank report. You.